going to talk about now is my super secret formula for success. We're going to start with um, what I trust for you will be a breakthrough in how you see your opportunity. This little exercise that we're going to go through is an exercise that you can use with people on your team. You can use it with perhaps prospects if they know enough about what we're doing, but it's really a better exercise for people that are on your team. And these questions came from uh, questions that I asked large groups of people over a long enough period of time to get clear on the answer. The last time I think I asked these was last year in a generic event, and there were maybe a couple of thousand people there, maybe 200 different network marketing companies. And I asked everybody in the audience, so how many of you think your products are the most phenomenal products that any company has ever developed for the marketplace, for consumers, life-changing, miraculous products? How many of you represent products like that? And out of 2,000 sales leaders, and maybe 200 different companies, how many hands do you think went up? So the next question is, how many of you feel like, authentically feel like your company, which includes your leadership and your opportunity and your fancy website and your philosophy and your culture and the compensation plan and all of that wrapped together. How many of you feel like your opportunity is the most phenomenal opportunity ever? And then I would ask the crowd, how many of you have personally sponsored four or five people in the last four or five months? And out of 2,000 people, where before all the hands went up, how many hands do you think went up? Maybe 5%. Yeah. When you're in front of the room and you're watching a large, a large audience, you can actually see who hasn't personally sponsored four or five people, but they just realized that if they don't raise their hand, somebody sitting next to them is gonna go, what, you haven't sponsored four or five people? So they go. <laughs> if you could get to the truth, it'd be about 5%. So then here's what we know about the business model. In order to get three or four people who are gonna actually do it, you really do have to personally sponsor somewhere between 30 and 100 people to get four who are gonna stick, actually be leaders, not be some timers, just actually build something, build some kind of an empire. You're gonna have to, it's gonna be somewhere around five or 10% of the people. So you're gonna have to personally enroll a lot of people. So if you're not personally enrolling on a regular basis, you're actually out of the game. Until you're regularly enrolling people, you're a bystander. And there's a lot of different words for that. I'm getting around to it, I'm getting, I'm learning, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, as soon as I get time and you got this whole story, but if you just look at the facts and look at the numbers, you're either enrolling or you're not enrolling. There is no try, you either are or you aren't. And your four year career doesn't start, until you are, and on a regular basis. What I found from working with people over long periods of time is that the people who wanted to sponsor, they actually wanted to build a team, but they weren't. The reason they weren't is they didn't think they knew how. So if you interview people who are, they want to build a team. So they're not the, they're not the people who are, well, I'm not sure, I'm, getting committed to something else tomorrow. They're actually committed and they want to build a team, but they're not building a team. If you could get inside their head and their heart and study them and interview them and say, okay, what's missing? What you would hear are things like, well, I don't know who to talk to, or I don't know where to find my prospects. I'm not sure about how to do the presentation, or they're afraid that people are gonna say no. So I came up with this pretend, I like pretend things, pretend scenario that helped people see that none of that was necessary. I want you to pretend that just like in 1946 where the management of California Vitamins changed the entire paradigm of network marketing by introducing the idea that anybody could enroll, introducing 
the eighth wonder of the world in geometric progressions, creating network marketing as a business model, I want you to imagine that your company changed the entire business model again by recognizing how much value actual leaders bring to a company. So instead of paying you commissions on sales, or maybe even in addition to paying you commission on sales, what they're going to pay you is, it's actually illegal to do this, or maybe companies would be figuring out how to do it, they're going to pay you what's called a headhunting fee. I want you to imagine that your company is going to pay you $500, not for everybody that you recruit, but for everyone that you invite to take a look. So I'm going to repeat this two or three times until you clearly get it. I want you to pretend that your company is going to pay you $500 for everyone you just invite to take a look. Now that has to be done with some integrity. So you have to have a tool ready to give them. You have to have a conversation that sounds like, would you like to take a look? And then you have the tool. They don't have to say yes you get paid if you ask them to look. You get $500 for everyone you ask with one caveat. You have to ask one person a day. By midnight every night, you have to have asked one person a day. If you don't, that program is never available for you again. So you don't get to use any excuses. It doesn't matter what happens circumstantially to you and your business, you have to make an invite once a day to get the 500, seven days a week. You can go to church in the morning and invite in the afternoon or invite at church. So that's $15,000 a month, $500 for every invite. And if you ever miss any excuse, you get sick, you get in a car accident, that doesn't matter, you're out. One invite a day. So my first question is, would you perform on that agreement? So would you look at that and say, you know what, that's a good deal, I'm in. Second question is, now think about this, could you perform on that agreement? Do you have the ability? Third question, this is the disabling question that people who are not in action stew in. And that question is, who would you talk to? This is an important physiological exercise. Call it guided visualization, if you will. I want you to get in touch with how your body moves, feels in this scenario. Every day that you invite one person to take a look, you get $500 and you have to play every day. And the question is, I'm gonna ask the question again, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and I want you to feel how you would feel. Close your eyes, $500. The question is, who are you gonna to talk to? Don't verbalize the answer. Be in touch with how your body feels. Who are you going to talk to? You got the essence of that? What you just experienced is what it feels like to be a master network marketer. That's what it feels like. How many of you experienced peace, calm, confidence, fun, adventure? Everything you experienced was positive. That's what it feels like. The answer you might have verbalized is that you would talk to everyone. But I'm going to actually give you a different answer that probably speaks to how you felt. Because the real answer is you wouldn't talk to everyone. Who you would talk to is anyone. And there's a big difference. Talking to everyone is kind of what a brand new crazed distributor does. You know, they go out and they just make a nuisance of themselves talking to everyone. <clears throat> but a professional master network marketer does not talk to everyone. Why? Because it makes a nuisance of you. It does not serve our profession well for you to talk to everyone. It, it, it's unprofessional, it's obnoxious, it's just not attractive. And think about the model that you're displaying for the person that you're looking to recruit. They're looking at you and what you're asking them to do is do what you're doing. And you're acting like 
a crazy person talking to everyone about your opportunity and just talking, 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 talking. What a master network marketer does is knows that they at all times are in control and have the ability to talk to anyone. And if you only need to talk to one person a day, you have all kinds of opportunities. So you're at peace throughout the day. You never feel panicked. You never feel like you need to glom on to somebody and get them to listen to you. You never feel like you need to get them in. A master network marketer never feels like they need to get someone in. What they know is all they need to do is invite. And everything else takes care of itself. The fourth question is, for $500 and all you need to do is invite, what would you say to them? If you were to interview every person in network marketing that makes over $10,000 a month, and if you could actually capture the line that invited them to take a look, I can guarantee you 99% of them, whatever the, their sponsor said to get them to look, didn't sound anything like the company presentation. Nothing like it. Why? It doesn't really matter. It's really hard to say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time. And that's what causes people to look at our opportunity is you get to them at the right time in their life. If it's the wrong time in their life, it's not that they don't want to make more money. It's not that they're not interested in your product. They just can't hear you. Because what's going on in their life right now is just, it's just too overwhelming for them. You got to get people at the right time. So if you imagine for $500 for an invite, what you would say to people, the answer that we find that most people sort of settle into that actually gives them peace and confidence is, I don't really know what I would say to them. And it doesn't matter anymore. You would say whatever you needed to say. You would say whatever you were inspired to say. And that's all that matters. And I'm not saying training's not important and presentation's not important. It is all important. And it's about 10% of what's important. 90% of what's important is for you to see and feel yourself doing it with peace, power, freedom, and authenticity. 90% of it is you just, I'm in. This is nothing but green lights for me. The last question to ask yourself is, what would you do if people said no? You get $500 an invite, what would you do if people said no? Notice your body. Who are you gonna talk to? What are you gonna say to them? What are you gonna do if they say no? How are you gonna feel if they say no? Notice for $500 an invite how that feels. Notice how it's like, whatever. In fact, Cha-ching. <laughs> Those places that perhaps you could feel, see yourself and feel, that's where you want to get to. And where you want to move away from is that whole thing about, I don't know who to talk to. Uh, you know, I've got to run ads or I've got to do internet. And it's not that ads and internet, are, that's fine. If you want to do that stuff, it's fine to do that. I mean, the more efficient you can be, the better. It's all, that's all fine. And none of it matters. You don't need any of it. And if you want to do it, it's great. If you want to be a master network marketer, you want to be able to be dropped out of an airplane anywhere in the world where your company does business and you can hit the ground running. Hit the ground like your company was paying you $500 to ask somebody to just take a look. And here's the secret formula. That's one, two, three, two plus two, 10,000, 2 million, 700. And the last number is 2,857.14. How do you decode the secret formula? Well, the first number one stands for one invite a day. Simple enough, seven days a week. One invite a day shall result in two presentations a week. And this is an important distinction because we're talking about a ratio. Ratios are something as a master network marketing leader that you will become masterful at knowing and teaching. And ratios just look like this. If I invite 10 people to look at my business, how many actually look? 
I'm saying two actually in this secret formula. And of course it'll be different for everyone. But here's the point about the ratio that I want you to understand. Because you may look at that and you may say, I gotta talk to a lot more than seven people to get two to actually take a look. And I will say, yeah, that's probably true now. But if you follow the secret formula, I say that won't be true. And follow this logic. If you were to invite one person a day under the motivational umbrella of getting $500 a person, like doing it that way, with that kind of peace and power and authenticity and fluidity and fun and adventure and spontaneity and I mean, if you were to do it that way and you invite one person a day for, let's say, 90 days. So you have personally invited 90 people to look at your opportunity and you've done it in a compressed period of time. If you invited 90 people in 90 days versus 90 people in 90 months, <laughs> the difference is night and day. 90 people in 90 days will produce an exciting result. 90 people in 90 months will produce nothing, even though it could be the exact same people. So here's what I can tell you about inviting 90 people in 90 days. In most companies, probably even in your company, that act would place you in the top 1% of all leaders in your, in your company worldwide for that 90 day period. Meaning that only one out of a hundred people might invite at least 90 people in 90 days in your company, in that 90 day period. Now that's kind of a blanket statement. I obviously don't know exactly how many people. The point is, you're in rarefied air. You're an elitist if you're inviting one person a day for 90 days straight. You're gonna know more about inviting people to look at your opportunity than 99% of the people in your company. You're gonna have that level of experience in 90 days. You don't need mastery in network marketing to make $10,000 a month. You don't. How do I know? Because if I paid you $500 for everybody you invited, do you know who to talk to? Do you know what to say to them? Do you know how to emotionally handle the rejection that you're gonna get most of the time? Mastery, that's 10 grand a month. Those three things are what eliminate most people from even playing the game. Well, I don't know who to talk to. Well, I don't know what to say to them. Well, what do I do if they say no? <laughs> those people don't get 10 grand a month. People that get 10 grand a month, those people go, I talk to anybody I want. What do I say to them? I don't know. Depends on them. Depends on the moment. <laughs> what do you do if they say no? Cash in? I don't know. See the difference? That's all. That's the only difference between people that make 10 grand a month and people that don't. That's the only difference. Here's how I know you're going to have a very high ratio of presentations to invites if you invite one person a day for 90 days. I know that because you're going to be cream of the crop in your company. You're going to be the best of the best. The first 30 days you may feel like, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I've talked to 15 people. I still don't have any presentations yet. But by the end of 90 days, you're going to be doing presentations in the 12th week to people you invited in the first week who told you absolutely no, never, not interested, not going to look at it, which is what I told my sponsor the first three times he prospected me. No, not ever. Three weeks later, I, I bought $5,000 worth of product. <laughs> How many of you have a similar story? No, not ever, and within 90 days you were in. Two presentations a week is eight presentations a month. The ratio that I'm suggesting is, if you'll do eight presentations a month, however you do a presentation, but it's enough information so somebody can make a decision to join your company as a builder, not as a customer, as a builder. So whatever that presentation is, you do eight of those presentations a month for three months. 24 presentations, full presentations, 
Maybe you don't do it. Maybe in your company, you just facilitate it. And it's, you know, let's join the hour long webinar or whatever it is. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter who does it. All that matters is you as the intended sponsor facilitate eight presentations. You get people there. By the end of three months, you're gonna be somewhere close to this ratio. Three out of eight people are gonna join your business. Some of the people are gonna join that you presented to two months ago, and they're gonna join two months later. You're gonna get this good. Why? Because hardly anybody does eight presentations in a month. It's like 24 presentations in three months. If you surveyed your company, if you got 100,000 people in your company and you could actually survey what percentage of these 100,000 people have ever done 24 presentations in a 90 day period, less than two or 3%, probably 1%, which makes you what? Rockstar. Okay, so one invite a day, two presentations a week, three business builders a month for two plus two years. And here's what for two plus two years means. You personally enroll at that rate. But does that mean if one month you only have one or you only have two? No, it doesn't really matter the actual number. What matters is the intensity. What matters is the compression of time. What matters is the activity. So there might be months you only sponsor one. In some months, it just happens that five fall in because they've been in the pipeline for nine months. Doesn't matter the monthly number. What matters is this, that you personally enroll people who declare, I get it, I'm doing it. And you keep personally enrolling people who declare, I get it, and I'm doing it until your business runs away from you. So here's what two plus two means. Two years personally enrolling at that pace on the outside. I don't know anyone in this profession, in any company that has personally enrolled aggressively, successfully for two years and not built an enormous empire, enormous. I don't know anybody that's ever done that. Most people that I know that have personally enrolled successfully and aggressively only have to do it for six to 12 months. But do it for at least two years or a better way of looking at it is do it until your business runs away from you. So maybe you do it for two years and then what do you do for the next two years of your four year career? You fan the fire, you blow on it, you lead, you inspire you train, you coach, you build out those deeper generations. You drive it deep. Now, does that mean that you don't drive deep in the first two years? No. Here's what personal master of sponsoring looks like from a strategy. I personally sponsor Krista. She raises her hand and she says, I get it, I'm doing it. I'll show you what my response is to Krista telling me, I get it and I'm doing it. No response until Krista does what? So she does it, so she acts, so she produces. So I use a simple system. I just use give hoops for people to jump through. Assignments, we call them commitment tests, leadership tests, motivational tests. So Krista says, I get it and I'm doing it. Say, great, put together a list of 100 people and let's get together in the next two or three days. Call me when you're ready. Krista doesn't call me, what do I do? Here's what most people do in network marketing. Krista doesn't call me, what do I do? Oh, please call me, what's the matter? You say, oh, you can't do it this week, what about next week? I don't wanna to get too busy. I don't wanna to talk to anybody else, just in case she gets ready. We chase people who just really wanna be chased. Sucks the life out of us. So it's not that I write Krista off. I don't write her off. She's totally, she's, in my, she's on my team. I'm ready to work with her whenever she's ready to work. But the people I work with are the people that put the list together and say, okay, let's meet now. Or if I have a meeting, they show up. Work with people that wanna work. 
And don't pay any attention to what people say. Nothing. Nothing they say matters. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything what people say. The only thing that demonstrates that people are committed is what they do. So as long as she does what I ask her to do, think about it this way. If Krista did everything I asked her to do, if I said, okay, put together a list of 100 people and let's get together, and she shows up, and then I say, okay, I want you to go study the compensation plan and come back with you know, 10 or 15 questions about the compensation plan, come back in a couple days with questions, and she does that. And then I say, uh, okay, now what I want you to do is get the product in the hands of your top 20 candidates sell it to them, give it to them, whatever you want to do, get it in their hands and set up appointments for them to meet with you and I so I can show them the business or whatever your system is. If she keeps doing what I tell her to do, is she going to be successful? Yeah, she is. So I work with her. So I sponsor Krista. If she makes a commitment, flakes out, as soon as she flakes out, I'm on to somebody else. As soon as she decides, now's not the right time. It's not a judgment call on my part. Like, I don't think she's a bad person. I don't think she's a flake. I don't think any of that. I don't have time to think that. I don't I really want to know what all the stuff that's going on with her. It's okay, whatever's going on with her. And I'm here to work with you whenever you get it sorted out. I am here for you. Let me know when that is by getting those 100 names and showing up at the whatever I ask you to show up at. And here's what our calls are, and here's when our events are, and all of that's right there for you. Good, we're good, right? Then I'm right here. When I say personally enroll three business builders a month, you know, maybe it's one, maybe it's five, but you keep up that process until your group's running away from you. And how do you know it's running away from you? You just can't keep up with it. You can't keep up with the growth, you can't keep up with people that are making requests of you, you just can't keep up. It's growing away from you. And that's, that's a clue for you to start to move more towards not management, but inspiration, coaching, and support. And you never, ever stop personally enrolling, ever. Whether you ever need people to enroll or not. And here's why. Our business lives and dies on duplication. It lives and dies on enrollment of new distributors. If we ever stop enrolling, growth stops. And that may not mean anything to you if you're making your five or 10 or $20,000 a month, but it means everything to the new person who came into business six months ago or a year ago. If everything stops, there's no opportunity for them. So we don't need to keep recruiting to keep like replacing everybody that quits. You shouldn't need to keep doing that. If you got great products and people get on the products, you should be building. You need to keep recruiting for the opportunity to be real for new people who come in the business. And you have to know this already. I know you guys know this already. You can tell people any which way you want. You can use any tool, any form of, of speaking motivation you want to instill in them the obligation and the desire to personally recruit. And nothing compares to you doing it. So if you're my team, the number one thing that I can do to inspire you, to send the signal to you that it is all about duplication is for me to continue to do it. And as soon as I go into the mood of, I have enough, I'm too busy, I'm too good to recruit, and I'm just gonna tell you to do it, the decline starts. It may take a year or two for it to start, but it'll start. It's like a cancer. It's a ripple effect. Once I'm too good for it, they're too good for it. Within three or four months, they're too good for it. Then you're all too good for it. And before long, the 90% the of my organization is too good to recruit. And now we have like bad things setting in. You're all familiar with this in the four-year career. So this is just more about how long do I stay in massive personal enrollments till you get your car over the hill. And the great thing about the car over the hill analogy is here, here's what you can't do in network marketing. You can't start and stop. You just can't. I suppose starting and stopping and starting again is better than starting and stopping and never starting again. Certainly it is. But starting and stopping is more challenging than if you'd never started to begin with. 
Like you don't get any added value for your history. It actually is a detractor. What you want to do is if you're if you think you're not ready, wait till you're ready. Wait your wait till you're ready to at least give it 90 days of a full out effort. Not just not being a maniac, but just being consistent. It's consistency, it's not being a maniac. It's consistency. The person that will invite one person a day for 90 days will outproduce the maniac every day of the week. One person a day for 90 days. Give it that 90 day run. If you're not there at 90 days, give it another 30 days. If you're not there at 120, give it another 30 days. Give it everything you got until you get your car over the hill. And just know that if you ever stop to rest or be distracted, what happens to your car? It quickly stops and it rolls back over you. And getting it started again, 10 times harder than starting the first time. So just realize that whenever you're tempted to take a break, it is gonna be 10 times harder to start after the break than it was to get started to begin with. If you personally enroll at that level for up to two years, which I think that's a stretch that you'd ever have to do it that long, between a year and two years, and then you lead and coach and inspire for another two years, at the end of four years, you should be earning about $10,000 a month. Maybe it's six, maybe it's 18. You should have a substantial business. And if you're earning $10,000 a month, your business is worth how much money? It's worth $2 million as an asset. Now, for you to believe that, you have to study asset value, residual income and asset value. You don't wanna take my word for it. You don't wanna quote my word for it. For you to be masterful and have conviction in talking to people about asset value, just use what I tell you as a stimulus for you to go study it. Go study what you would have to amass in real estate or equities or cash and the income that they would produce in order for you to have $10,000 a month in income. And you'll find something in the order of $2 million. But you want your own examples or your own experience in creating that. So that when you speak to people, you're not parroting my words, they're your words, they're your research. What you will find is 10 grand a month is worth $2 million. Now we flip back into, if you invited one person a day, every day for the full two years, factoring that you get two weeks a year off, because we know that you're trained to get a two week annual vacation. If you get two weeks a year off and you invite one person a day for two years, how many people have you invited total? 700. And if you built a business worth $2 million, what is each invite worth? Every time you make an invite, if you trust the system, if you understand the system, if you trust the system, every time you make an invite, you're building a couple of thousand dollars worth of net worth as long as you don't quit and you trust the process. That's the secret formula.